You guys weren't prompted. I didn't say a word. We have a brown man who's lived here for two years who came from Venezuela and said, hey, I'm blessed to be the best country in the world. And every single person in this room shouted at him with your applause. We're blessed to have you right back. That's all. Yeah. All right, so is this an ironic communist hat? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't know, you got the military fatigues, you look a little uh, pissed off. No, actually I was gonna buy the Che Guevara shirt, but my mom was gonna kill me if I actually did it. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Your, mo your mom's a Che Guevara fan? Oh no, we're from Venezuela. Oh, also, okay. Uh, so, yeah. she's more of a Maduro gal. <laughs> oh no, hell no. Give me an M, give me an A, give me a D, give oh, me a, I'm starving. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm joking! <laughs> it's actually true, so. It's what? It's actually true, so. She, it's actually true? Your mother's starving and you say that laughing? You're worse than the Joker guy. <laughs> he's, like, he's true. My mommy's very hungry. <laughs> well, I was... Every now and then I throw like nerds candy at her through a cage. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, what's your question, sir? Okay, so first of all, I would like to thank you and like everybody here present because before I came to this country two years ago, everybody told me and it was like, common culture, that white people was racist and everybody with a, with a gun was a crazy person. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank you all to prove that all that is wrong and I'm blessed to be in the best country in the world. Thank you. You just talked about two years that you've been in this country. And when you first came to this country, you sort of thought that white people were racist and everyone had a gun was crazy. Yeah, like, it was funny because I didn't know English that well whenever I came. Yeah. But nobody even, even made fun of my accent. They just I just did, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was more so making fun of you laughing at your starving mother. <laughs> But here's something that's really interesting to me, right? When they want to say, when the left tried to say that the conservative consists of mainly alt-right people who don't, who don't have a problem with illegal immigration, who just have a problem with anyone who isn't white coming to this country. You guys weren't prompted. I didn't say a word. We have a brown man who's lived here for two years who came from Venezuela and said, hey, I'm blessed to be the best country in the world. And every single person in this room shouted at him with your applause, we're blessed to have you right back. That's all. Yeah. Because let, let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something. Every now and then I'll get some trolls who'll be like, well, 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 can you name any single country that's been successful, that's had immigrants ever, they're gonna, they're gonna destroy Western culture. Every now and then you do see some people who are extremists and I go, hold on a second, are there any societies that have been successful with immigrants? I don't know, I point to the United States. Now, what does that mean? This is important. This is important to understand, right? We didn't lose our culture in the United States. First off, when we created the Constitution that all people were created equal. And of course, back then, most of them were white because slavery was bad and then we kind of fixed it. On us, we screwed up. But we didn't lose our culture when we rightfully freed the slaves. We didn't lose our culture when the Italians came over. We didn't lose our culture when the Irish came over. We didn't lose our culture when the Polish came over. We didn't lose our culture when the Jews came over. The only problem that we've had with immigration is a modern leftist philosophy that flies in the face of a melting pot where people like yourself come in to be a part of the great experiment that is the United States of America. That's a very new idea. A new idea that you can migrate to this country, whether legally or illegally, and not take part in the culture, not learn a language, and not being American first. And that's why I have a real problem. I'm not as concerned with Venezuelan Americans coming here who are anti-American. I'm more concerned with anti-American Americans who wanna bring people in here who don't like this country. And that's why if you line them up and you give me a choice between an angry, raspy feminist with blue hair and a pussy hat, or, uh, or even Elizabeth Warren and some Bangladesh, some Bangladeshi who's coming here who wants to open up a business and fly the American flag and be a part of this culture, guess what? I'm picking Haji every single time. <laughs> so thank you so much. Did you have a question? Yeah. Um... Okay. <laughs> So, Sorry, it's like James Brown. I can't stop myself. I can't stop. And I go down. Well, oh, I don't so, have any cool people to put a blanket on me. Sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. So actually, hey, aren't now, these caskets cool? I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so actually, my only question, I have been like amazed by everything in America, everything but one thing. 
I'm amazed and at the same time Fat horrified. <laughs> no, how popular socialism has been here in America, especially because I have seen like yeah. what what can it do to a wonderful country. And right. I really don't want that to happen to America. But my question is, why do you think it became so popular over here? Because I've never lived it. That's it. I know I should, you know, I just kind of went off, I gave you a soliloquy. The truth is, as it relates to socialism, uh, no one here has ever actually lived it. I mean, I know Bernie Sanders honeymooned in a tent in the USSR, but outside of that, no one's ever lived, like I was raised in Quebec, which isn't socialist like Venezuela, but we do have a socialized healthcare system, we do have a 52% income tax, and it's actually, you don't have to be making that much to be in that highest income tax bracket. Um, I lived it, and as it relates to like socialized healthcare, that's a good example, right? Here's what often happens, okay? This is why I think so. They haven't lived it, but they also get tricked. By the same media who wants to silence Generation Z, by the way. Here's what you often see, like let's take healthcare for an example. By the way, how's healthcare in Venezuela compared to the United States? Stuff. You have free stuff, is it yeah. good? No. Okay. <laughs> I already told you my mom was starving. Um, so what they do, and you see this a lot from the left, and I hear this in the debates, and I'm amazed, this is one thing that hopefully you guys understand and see this sort of bait and switch that happens a lot. The left, what they do is they say, hey, hey, the United States, we spend too much on health care. Understood, we do have a system that's broken, it's not flawless. They say every single other industrialized country has socialized health care. Okay, they're not necessarily all the same kind of system, but I do understand they have something more similar to what you would see as socialized health care compared to the United States. And then they say, they spend less, and by the way, they have better health care. By the way, they rank Venezuela above the United States. This comes from two studies, okay? This is important to note. What they do is they talk about health care, and they talk about the problems that we have in the United States objectively, and we do have problems, and then what they say is these healthcare uh, systems in other countries are better, and all of a sudden they start pushing subjective ratings. It comes from two studies. It comes uh, from one is the World, uh, I think World Health Organization, they do their global rankings, okay? Has the United States ranked right between, if I'm not mistaken, Slovenia and Colombia? Yeah, go, go in next time you need to have a root canal, Pablo Escobar shows up. I mean. <laughs> It is unbelievable. And then there's, another, there's one other one, the more recent one was um, the Commonwealth Studies. So these are the only two studies that I know of. And by the way, the Commonwealth Studies, uh, Commonwealth, uh, I believe that was the organization, we wrote about it on the website. They uh, listed 11 different countries for healthcare. And they ranked them and they said, okay, these are the best from best to worst. Do you know who's ranked 11th? The United States. Do you know who was ranked number one? The UK. Now here's the thing. How did they come up with those rankings? Does anyone here, even if you're a liberal, does anyone here believe that our healthcare is not as good as Cuba or Slovenia, for God's sakes? No, of course not. What they do is say we have problems, and then they say these people have better healthcare. Why? Because they're happier with their healthcare. Well, that doesn't matter. If I give somebody a shit sandwich and they're happy because it's free, it doesn't mean that it's better than me having a meal of broccoli and chicken breast and quinoa, right? You can say all you want that my meal's more expensive and the person who's starving who has a crap sandwich is happier with it. That doesn't mean that it's objectively better than the United States. I'm amazed that nobody talks about this more. Conservatives get sucked into it a lot and they say, well, these countries are ranked higher than the United States. Okay, let's take the one that's ranked number Number one in the most recent study. Guess what they have there? Guess, we want to look at objective outcomes? Mortality rate, your likelihood of suffering, uh, of dying from a serious illness. It's two to three to four times higher in the UK. I think we have the numbers. Uh, it was like 2.5 times more likely to die from breast cancer, from prostate cancer. Uh, the wait times are, are exponentially higher than the United States. Drug development doesn't come out of these countries, but guess what? People who don't have to pay, even if they're in countries where they're paying 60% income tax, right, and they can't afford a car, like in Denmark because the tax is so overwhelming so they all drive old gay passats. They think that their health care is better because they see it as free. Don't be fooled by the rankings that list our health care lower than other countries because of subjectivity and people saying that they like their health care more. And that tricks a lot of young Americans to go, well, hold on, socialism must be doing it right. It's a lie. It's not true. You don't have to buy it. Cut that shit off at the pass.
Thank you very much sir, for your question. You're welcome. Hey there, YouTube viewer. If you like this video, click one of these other videos playing in a box, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You may be wondering why after this outlandish video, this is such a straight end card. That's because we've recently learned that end cards actually determine the YouTube algorithm as it relates to controversy on a sliding scale. So we have uh, a yellow and it escalates all the way to the word f